author Bryant McGill wrote, there's no love without forgiveness. And there's no forgiveness without love. Very profound saying and very appropriate for our readings today as you hear it's about forgiveness and about forgiving others and loving others. In preparation for my homily this weekend, I had decided I was going to do something. I was going to research the greatest story of forgiveness and love. I was going to look around and I was going to present that to you so you'd sit there and go, wow, how about that story? How about that person being able to forgive like that? How loving, what loving it is. And then I thought after a while, I don't have to research anymore. I can stop. I don't have to research anymore because the greatest story about forgiveness and love is standing right in front of us. The story of our Lord Jesus Christ who forgives and loves more than anyone or any story you'll ever read. That he went to the cross for us and for our sins and for our forgiveness to reconcile us to the Father and is raised on the third day so we could have eternal life. We hear that a lot, don't we? Sometimes it just becomes part of it. Oh, well, yeah, that's it. No, no, no. This is the greatest story ever of forgiveness and love. I did research online, and yeah, there's some really good stories. Isn't it nice that we're able to forgive when people harm us or our families? It's wonderful. But nothing like that forgiveness. And forgiveness for us is a very, very, it's very demanding for us in our Catholic faith. It really is. We hear about forgiveness in our gospel reading today when Peter comes to Christ and says, how many times should I forgive my brother? Seven? Is it seven times, Lord? Now, how has he come to the number seven? Well, back in the first century, the rabbis, when they taught, they were teaching the people back then that you must forgive at least three times. They did, three times. Now, the fourth time, eh, jump ball. How do you feel about the person? You can do whatever you want. I mean, it sounds funny, but it's what, what they taught. So when Peter comes up with seven, he probably just said, you know what? I'm doubling that three and adding one just for good measure because maybe, just maybe Christ will think I'm really generous. And then we hear the answer of the Lord. He throws out a number, which is a very, very high number, but it's not meant to be quantitative at all. It's not meant to be like, oh, it's so many times and you stop. No, the Lord basically is throwing out this big number because he said, our forgiveness should be limitless just as the Heavenly Father forgives us. And His forgiveness is limitless. It doesn't end. We don't keep track. We shouldn't keep track. And so then He goes on to tell the story about what I call the ungrateful servant, where He owes this king this huge amount of money. When you do some more diving into the readings, this amount of money is amount of money He could never, ever pay back. And He throws Himself down at mercy, asks for mercy, and the king grants him that mercy because the servant says, I'll pay you back. Master knows he can't pay me back. It's impossible. Too big a sum of money. But after that, with the little bit of money that a fellow servant owes him, he chokes him. He says, I want my money back. Even though his fellow servant fell down on his knees just like this other man did and begged him for mercy that he'll pay him back. Nope. Throws him in jail. And then we hear when the king finds out about it, he brings the guy in and calls him a wicked servant and says, how could you possibly not forgive this person who you, owed you very little and you owed me something you could never, ever pay back? And I forgave you. How could you do that? I mean, then what he goes on to say, what, he, what the king goes on to, to do is he hands him over to the torturers. And then now here's a tough thing for us. Jesus says to his disciples there and to Peter, he says, and this is what your heavenly Father will do to you if you don't forgive your brothers from your heart. Wow. That's, that's pretty big news there. This is what will happen to us if we don't forgive from the heart. Not I forgive, but I'll never forget. Yeah, I forgive you, never forget. No, forgiving from the heart is forgiving and also forgetting, letting it go. So what are the readings really telling us today? Well, we hear in the first, first reading, of course, how can we expect mercy 
when we're angry with our brother and we don't forgive him? How can we be vengeful and ask the Lord to forgive us? Being a Christian is not, you know, it's really not the easiest thing to do as we see. Forgiveness is difficult. It's really difficult. I had a tough time all week reading these and praying on them. Because forgive, what God is asking us to do is very, very difficult. And if we want to follow Christ and be called a Christian, we must forgive our brothers. Because even in the Our Father, it says the Lord's going to forgive us as we forgive other people. And the parable that the Lord tells today is to show us how much God just, just forgives us. Think of all the time in our lives here. Think of all the sins that we've committed, the selfish actions, the, the hurtful ways we are to other people, maybe the sin of pride, the sin of ego, anger, lies. All these sins through all these years. And we take Him to the Lord in the sacrament of reconciliation. And what does He do? Forgives us wholeheartedly, without limit. We can go back to confession every week, every month, every other day with a sincere heart of wanting to be forgiven, and the Lord doesn't count. He forgives us. He shows us that limitless, kind mercy without any strings attached. And He asks us to do the same thing for our brothers and to our sisters. To take that mercy to them. To show them that mercy that no matter how much they have hurt us, nothing could compare to how God forgives us and all our debts. There's no comparison. There really isn't. That little hurt to what God has forgiven us, it's like comparing a debt of $10 worth $10 million. Simple as that. So my brothers and sisters, today I think maybe we should look at the readings and, and think about this. Think about forgiveness and where are we with our forgiveness? I mean, do we forgive just on a certain amount of times? Do we have a limit to it? Do we have strings attached to it? Do we forgive, like I said, but don't forget? Maybe, maybe sometimes can we be like that ungrateful servant who wants mercy, but then demands justice from everybody else? Just certain things to think about because, you know, true forgiveness, forgiveness from the heart is basically humanly impossible. We need God's grace in order to do this. We need to pray to God to ask Him for the grace to be able to get, forgive people as He forgives us. Because without Him, we can't do it. So my brothers and sisters, as we come to the altar today to receive our Lord in the true presence, the body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord, to be more like Him, let's come to Him with thanksgiving. Let's come to Him and say, thank you, Lord, for your limitless mercy and forgiveness in our lives and ask Him for the grace that we may be able to forgive others as He forgives us. And in ending, I'd like to share with you a sign that I read earlier this week appropriately for this readings. The sign read, the first to apologize is the bravest. The first to forgive is the strongest. And the first to forget is the happiest. My brothers and sisters, be strong. Be brave. Be happy. Be forgiving.